Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Please stand as you are able. It is uh, great to see everyone both here in the sanctuary and on Zoom on this uh, third Sunday after the Epiphany. Our service of Holy Eucharist Rite 2 begins on page 2 of your bulletin or page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be the one holy and living God, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, in the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim him to all people the good news of his salvation that we and all the whole world may perceive the glory that is of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning. The first reading comes from the book of Isaiah. There will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as people exult in dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian, the word of the Lord. So 
Psalm 27 can be found on page 5 of your bulletin. We will read this responsively. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? One thing have I asked of the Lord, one thing I seek. To behold the fair beauty of the Lord. For in the day of trouble, he shall keep me safe in his shelter. Even now, he lifts up my head. Therefore, I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with sounds of great gladness. Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. You speak in my heart and say, Seek my face. Hide not your face from me. You have been my helper. Cast me not away. The second reading is taken from the first book of Corinthians. It can be found on page six of your bulletin. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able for the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now when Jesus had heard that John the Baptist had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. 
And for those who sat in the region and the shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called to them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. From our colic to this morning, give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> well, today we hear uh, another call story. Matthew's version of Jesus calling his disciples walking by the Sea of Galilee and, and just reaching out with plain words, follow me. And these people, these disciples that we now know them as, follow Jesus. Immediately they follow with just the word, follow me. Of course, uh, John, uh, the sons of Zebedee, they get a little bit more, follow me and I'll make you fish for people. And they follow. Immediately they hear God's voice and they're ready to follow. I happen to love this, um, this day in the church. Uh, today, 22, 21 years ago, I was interviewing at uh, St. Michael's Episcopal Church in Brigham City, uh, um, Utah. It was my interview on my very first call. And this was the gospel. And of course it talks about fishers being fishers of men too. So I could always bring in fishing stories. So this is, a, this is a good day. I like these readings. But today I, wanna, I don't want to talk about fishing. I want to talk about hearing that call. Hearing that call of Jesus. I mean, can you imagine, just sit here and think. Here you are, members of Christ's Episcopal Church. Here you are sitting in, the, in, the par, in, the, in our congregation. And can you imagine as you walk out the door, someone walking by and say, follow me? And following that person, having that understanding that, wow, this is the Messiah. That would be a huge thing, wouldn't it? Can you imagine sitting at work? Maybe it's a bad day. The um, sons of Zebedee, um, they, were, they were mending, fence, uh, mending their uh, nets, probably not the, their most favorite thing to do. But they were at work. They were with their father. They were in the family business. And Jesus walks by and says, follow me. And they leave. Can you imagine being out on the work site? Maybe you're pouring concrete. Maybe, you're, maybe it's inside and you're working at your computer, tapping away, doing your favorite Excel sheet because you just love Excel sheets. I actually have nephews who do that. Uh, a nephew who loves those Excel sheets. And if someone walks by and says, follow me, and you know deep down that's the right thing to do. How could people do that? There's one story that helps illustrate that, I think, a little bit at least. It's from Roger Nishaka he, from Columbia University. He shares a reflection of him growing up where they never watched TV on Sunday night, except, uh, they never watched, um, except for on Sunday nights. Never watched TV at dinner, 
But on Sunday nights, they were able to watch TV because Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom was on. His dad, who was a pastor, saw this as a theological uh, journey, demonstrating to them the wonders of creation, the wonders of God's imagination in, in creation. On one episode that he remembers, it's, it was about elephant seals in Argentina. The show followed one mother and her seal pup. Soon after the pup's birth, the mother abandoned the pup on the shore and entered the rich waters off the coast to feed. All the mothers were doing this. So they give birth. They make sure their child is strong enough, and then they go into the sea, leaving their pups on, the, on there. As they returned down the coastline a little ways, they would call to their pups and listen for a response. Roger shares that he was convinced this would never work. They would be separated forever. But with following each other's voices and sense, soon the mother pup and mother and the pup were reunited. The host shared that from that moment of birth, the pup's sound and scent are imprinted on the mother, and the mother's sound and scent are imprinted on the pup. His dad, the method or the Presbyterian minister, shared with him, you know, that is how it is with God. We are imprinted with a memory of God, and God is imprinted with a memory of us. And even if it takes a lifetime, we will find each other. So with that story in mind, and maybe some of your own stories of, of hearing that voice of God, hearing that whisper, maybe we can understand these disciples immediately getting up and following Jesus. They knew that this person was the Messiah. Maybe because they had heard stories. Maybe these were disciples of John the Baptist who, after John's arrest and all that, just went back to work and said, okay, maybe we were wrong. Maybe they had heard about Jesus. We don't know those details. All we know is that they heard his voice. They heard the call and they followed him. Can you imagine? Maybe, hopefully, you can imagine. Maybe not quite that dramatically of leaving everything and following Jesus. But hearing that whisper, if you will, hearing that voice, maybe it's more than a whisper. Maybe it was a shout from above. And just knowing that you were called to something new. Knowing that you were called to follow in a new way. Can you imagine that? Have you experienced that? We hear stories many times of these calls. What's your experience? What's your story in that? And maybe it's a simple call. Maybe it's a call to serve the church in a new way. Maybe it's a matter of, wow, I feel a call to be on altar guild. Or, wow, I see everyone up there reading, and you know what? I want to share that as well. Maybe it's a call outside of our doors, helping others, saying, wait a minute. There are people out there in need, and I need to help. I need to reach out and walk with them in a new way. Maybe that's your call. Maybe that's the voice from within saying, follow me. Follow me outside these walls and into this place. Next week, we have our annual meeting. I think today's gospel is a very good reminder to us all that our mission, everything we do, is to follow Jesus. And it's not to get tied up into reports. It's not to get tied up into financials. It's not to get tied up of, wow, do we have fresh baked bread? All that's important, keeping the lights on. All that is important, but that's not our mission. That's to help our mission, to follow Jesus outside our doors to follow Jesus into the world, to leave what we might be doing now and see and, see and feel called to something new. So what is your call today? 
Maybe Jesus is just starting to tap on, on your shoulder. Maybe you're saying, yeah, but I'm not ready for that. Took me a long time to finally say, okay, maybe it's time to go into the ordained ministry rather than just serving within a church. Sometimes it is a whisper that we want to put away and away and away. Sometimes it's a slap in the face saying, you need to do it and you need to do it now. But can you hear God's voice? Can you smell that scent, if you will? Because when it's a true call, I think deep down we know we're just afraid to follow, aren't we? It might be too rough. It might be too consuming. It might mean a little bit more of me. How many times have we used that? Oh, things are really comfortable. We don't need that on top of everything else, do we, Lord? So today, may we hear God's voice. May we follow in a way that is true to who we are. May we walk in the way and may we hear his voice. May we smell the scent of Christ. Smell the scent of our creator, of the Holy Trinity. Know that we are home. May we be bold enough to follow that call. May we listen close enough to hear it as well. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let us stand and affirm our faith with the Nicene Creed found on page 8 of your bulletin or page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Good morning. The prayers of the people, Form 3, can be found on page 9 of your bulletin or in the Book of Common Prayer on page 387. Father, Mother, Creator of all, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for Bishop Kim for all bishops, priests, deacons, and lay ministers. We 
We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. Today we lift up all those we know and love but see no longer. Let us pray for our own, oh, sorry. We pray for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Today, Lord, we pray for all those in our parish family who are sick, those who care for them, and those who are in need of God's strength and guidance. Jerry, Norm, Richard and Rebecca, Shelley, Wesley, Stephanie, Debbie, Steve, Amber, Matthew, Baby Brindley Rose, the Almeral family, Daryl, Linda, Gail, Richard, Gregory, Kendra, Jay, Helen, John, Samantha, Kim, Michael, Peggy, Mark, Zidani, Marsha, Judy, Patty, Steve, Sage, Barbara and family, Jen, Nancy and Frank, Gina, our military families, law enforcement and first responders, our homebound parishioners, and those in nursing facilities, all who are sick, and the healthcare workers who care for them. And today, let us pray together for our country. We pray for justice, we pray for peace, we pray for understanding, and we pray for an end of the racism, hatred, violence, and political division that continues to infect and divide this country. We celebrate with those who have birthdays this week. Father Harold Warren, Mary Cox, Mary Kate E. Morgenthaler, Kay Finla, Judy Warren, and Teresa Thompson. Today's altar flowers have been donated by Stephen and Marsha Vecchioni in celebration of Jean Burke's 95th birthday. Holy and gracious God, we do lift these and all the prayers of our hearts up to you, knowing that you are constantly doing more than we could ever ask or imagine. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace, everyone, both here in the sanctuary and on Zoom. God's peace.
All right. Please be seated. Well, it is uh, great to see everyone. We do welcome all of our visitors and newcomers, both here in the sanctuary and on Zoom. Invite you to sign our guest book or on Zoom. Let us know who you are via chat. A few items of life in the parish. Uh, first of all, and most important, remember, next Sunday we have our annual meeting. So that will be one service at 10. And then following um, that, we'll have a little potluck downstairs. And then we'll come upstairs for the annual meeting few people, especially those online, we will be have the annual meeting online. That's why we'll come back up here. Uh, some people are asking about what time. It'll probably be right about noon and all that. So if you're heading home afterwards or whatever and want to join us, it'll be right about noon or so for the annual meeting. So please join us for that. Um, also, if you signed up for Lenten um, Reflections, first of all, thank you all. I think within a week we had everything signed up for our Lenten devotions and those reflections. Those are due on Friday the 10th of February, so uh, please get those in as well. We do continue our uh, um, Epiphany study over in the um, chapel at 915 between services, and that we're looking at those uh, books of Ruth and Esther, a great little study there, so join us over there. Uh, today at 10.30, we do have a baptism for uh, James Benjamin Hoskins and all that, one of our new babies that have been uh, this last, the last year was a good year for uh, babies here in the, in the church. So we'll be baptizing him. We do have his Bible in the back. So if you'd like to sign the Bible and let him know that you're thinking of him and praying for him, that would be great. Also, um, for the uh, Alive magazine, we have our newest edition out, some great stories in here and everything. We have a few printed editions in the back, but we also have a link to the, um, there's a QR code back there if you want to grab it that way. We've emailed the link, it's on our website and everything. So do uh, please check out that, some great uh, stories in there. Um, also with the annual report, uh, with the annual meeting coming up, um, usually we try to have that annual report on, on that Sunday before. We'll be emailing that out Monday or Tuesday. So uh, check your email and all, and then that way we'll have that as a PDF to everyone so you can look over all of those before the meeting as well. We also, believe it or not, it is Girl Scout cookie time. I, I know, it's like, oh yeah. But we got a couple, we got like a month before Lent. So hopefully these will be delivered before Lent. But uh, there is a sign-up sheet. Our... Uh, our illustrious uh, Trevor's granddaughter, Sophie, is a, a brownie now. I said, well, why is she selling cookies? We should have brownies, right? Shouldn't brownies <laughs> sell brownies? But the cookie, uh, cookie sign-up sheet is in the back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just go back to being a priest, Brian. <laughs> Not a comedian. Today, uh, this week also on Wednesday is our um, um, supper club. And that'll be at uh, Castle Cafe at 5.30, so sign up for that if you'd like, and we'll all join over for a meal and just a good fellowship as well. Any other announcements that need to be made? All right. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship.
Please stand as you are able. Thank you, sir. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy known have we given thee. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And now we continue with Eucharistic Prayer B found on page 367 of the Book of Common Prayer, or page 11 of your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Thank you, Lord. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Barbara, we send you out bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we share one bread and one cup. Go in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. And now we continue with the post-communion prayer found on page 20 of your bulletin, or page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand as you are able and let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be careful as you go out into God's creation, for it does not belong to you. Be gentle with yourself and with one another, for you are the dwelling place of the Most High God. Be alert and hesitant, for sometimes God is but a whisper. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you this day and always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.